Do you want to try out the Nutanix Cloud Platform in your own home lab? Nutanix Community Edition is a community-supported version of Nutanix AOS that allows you to get hands-on with the best hyperconverged infrastructure technology in your own lab. Hi, I'm Laura Giordana, Technical Marketing at Nutanix. Community Edition 2.1 was just released with support for AOS 6.8.1. Join me as I walk through the process to install it in my own home lab on an Intel NUC. Let's get started. So first, taking a look at the recommended hardware. This is, of course, outlined in the documentation, but here is a quick summary. You can also find a crowdsource list of hardware configurations submitted by users that have successfully installed Nutanix CE. For my setup today, I'll be installing on a single node Intel NUC with the following specs. So it has four cores, Intel i7, 64 gigs of system memory, two 500 gig SSDs, and then I have two 32 gig USB 3.0 drives. One I'm going to be using as the bootable CE installer image, and then the second will be used as the uh, AHV hypervisor boot disk. And note that the boot disk can also be internal, so you could be using something like a SATA DOM or a SATA SSD uh, or a hard drive. So you'll also want to have your network information readily available for configuring the installation. So we'll be installing the AHV hypervisor with a controller virtual machine for the storage management. So we'll need an IP address for both of those. And then when we configure the cluster, we'll want to have our cluster virtual IP as well as our DNS and NTP servers that we want to use. So just looking at a quick overview of the install process. So we have our NUC with the specs that I mentioned previously. And then we're going to be plugging in two USB drives, one with the installer software and the other one to be used as the hypervisor boot disk. Then the AHV hypervisor will be installed as well as the controller virtual machine for managing the storage and providing the management plane. And then once everything's up and running, we can SSH to the controller VM, either through the hypervisor console or directly from our workstation. And then we will browse to the CVM IP on a web browser for our first login, at which point we'll be able to start creating user VMs. So the first thing we'll need to do is log into the Nutanix community forums at next.nutanix.com. So I'll go ahead and log in with my my.nutanix account. And if you don't have a my Nutanix account, go ahead and sign up for one. Once we're logged in, we can navigate over to the discussion forum of community edition and we can click on the Community Edition download. Now I've already downloaded the ISO to my local laptop, but this is where you'll find the latest ISO as well as any drivers that you'll need for your workloads and the documentation and guides will be there as well. So once you have the ISO downloaded to your workstation, the next thing we're going to do is download the um, latest edition of Rufus, which is how we will create our bootable USB drive. So within the Rufus application, we have our USB drive plugged in and it's detected under the device column. Uh, we'll select our ISO that we want to image. Uh, the partition scheme you can change based on your device, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the default. Everything else should remain the default. Um, and let's go ahead and click start. So this will take a few minutes to image. Once it's done, you can go ahead and eject that USB drive. I also have my second 32 gig USB drive, which will be used as my AHV boot disk that will remain attached to the NUC. So I'm gonna go ahead and format that quickly and go ahead and plug both of these into the NUC and start it up. So we'll speed this up a little here. We can see we're booting from the CE installer. Uh, it'll take a couple minutes to get to the installer screen. And once we get to the installer screen, we can see that um, we're, the hypervisor selection is AHV. So as of CE 2.1, it's AHV only. And from this screen, we can also see the uh, disk selection. So it selects defaults. Uh, so we can see that it's using the SSD. It's using one of the SSDs for the CVM boot disk, the second one for the data disk, the third one, uh, that's the first USB, which is our installation media. And then the last one is the USB for the hypervisor installation. Um, I'll then enter in the network information that I collected earlier for each of the inputs. And then on the next page, uh, we'll read the EULA carefully, accept it, and that will start the installation process. So this will take a few minutes. On my NUC, it took about 15 minutes for this part. 
So remember, Nutanix is a hyper-converged platform, so it's not just installing the AHV hypervisor, but the management plane and the storage controller as well. Once installation is complete, you'll be prompted to remove the installation media and reboot the system, at which point you will be now booting into AHV. So at this point, once you're at the AHV login prompt, you can log in with the default username and password, which is root Nutanix slash for you. But there's still some additional configuration going on. The CVM is still coming online and it'll go through a couple of reboots. So it won't be quite ready to start creating the cluster yet. So when you can log into the CVM, you can run the cluster status command. And if it shows that Genesis is not up yet, just give it a couple more minutes to uh, get to that point. Once the cluster status command on the CVM gives us a response that the cluster is currently unconfigured, we know it's now ready to be created. So we can go ahead and run through the creation step as per the documentation. Since we just have one node, I'm creating a single node cluster. After a few minutes when the cluster has been successfully created, so you can see that success message there, we can now do some initial configuration of our cluster. So we can set the cluster name, uh, we can configure the external IP address of the cluster, as well as the DNS and NTP servers. Uh, there's some default DNS and NTP servers already configured, so you can see what these are with the get name server and get NTP server options, and then add to these lists or modify as needed. So now we can log into the cluster UI via a web browser, um, either from the CVM IP or the external IP we just set up. Uh, we'll bypass that self-signed certificate warning. You'll be prompted to change the default password, which again is Nutanix slash for you. So you'll update that to your own password, re-log in, and then the last step is to connect our next community account to the cluster, and then our cluster will be ready to use. So once that's all connected, we can see our CE nut cluster is running AHV on one host and one block and we're running AOS 6.8.1 with the community license. So our cluster is now ready to run workloads. So stay tuned for the next video where we'll dive deeper into the interface and deploy some workloads on Nutanix CE. So hopefully that helps get you going with Nutanix Community Edition. To get started, head over to Nutanix.com CE and be sure to check out our next community forums at next.nutanix.com if you have any questions. See you in the next video.